A taxpayer-funded mural in Toronto has become the centre of controversy. Some see it as graffiti art, but others are now seeing it as a jihadi call to war. The City of Toronto is now investigating. Our Marissa Semke is joining us live in studio with some of those details. Marissa, what are we hearing? Well, essentially, I mean, if you look at the, at the, at the mural, it's pretty innocuous. It seems actually rather poetic. It's visually stimulating. In fact, the artist that was commissioned for this mural said he chose the verse because he liked the way that it looked, but perhaps he didn't consider the meaning behind it. The verse painted in Arabic calligraphy literally reads in English, help from Allah is near and a speedy victory is assured. Now critics uh, say that the words once ins were once inscribed on the handles of Islamic swords and uh, today are sung by Islamists in battle, uh, uh, in battle, Islamists like jihadists uh, or Al-Qaeda for that matter. Now, Salim Ahmed, he's one of those critics. He's a member of the Muslim Canadian Congress. He launched a petition uh, calling on Mayor Rob Ford and City Councilor Paula Fletcher to take this mural down. And he has about 900 signatures now. So we went to City Hall and spoke with City Councilor Paula Fletcher to see if she had any intention of taking the mural down. Here's how she responded. I don't read Arabic. And we've sent that out to uh, the scholar at U of T, and I'm going by that interpretation. Well, perhaps you should have known what the word said prior to uh, allowing it to go up on a mural. Uh, the professor at the University of Toronto, uh, in fact, said that the mural has dual meanings, uh, multiple meanings for that matter. He said it could be interpreted uh, as uh, someone espousing the virtues of jihad, but also uh, it could be interpreted as encouraging patience uh, to someone who's suffering in economic hardship. But regardless, Salim Ahmed says it has no place on the side of a building. Take a listen. I don't see any purpose of such a slogan which is primarily used by the jihadist, by the invading armies, Muslim armies, right from the get-go from the day one. But in any which way you want to look at it, other than the visual beauty, it has no place on that wall. Now, an investigation is being conducted by the city. I was able to speak with Mayor Rob Ford earlier. He was able to confirm that. I also spoke with City Councilor Doug Ford, who said if, in fact, it is a jihadi battle cry, well, then it needs to be removed. All right. Marissa Semke reporting from our Toronto studio. Thank you for this. Thank you. Now, joining me with more on this story is Sun News contributor Tarek Fatah. I'd like to thank you for joining us here in studio. Thank you for having me. This is something we've been talking uh, in depth about here at the Sun News Network. So you recently wrote an article about this for the Toronto Sun. Can you give our viewers a better sense of why you think this was put on the wall? Well, uh, if you go by what is officially said, uh, which leaves a lot to be said, but it is someone's suggestion uh, to the artist that this verse looks very beautiful mm -hmm. and he found the translation okay. My point is that there are two uh, calligraphy sections done on this building, one on the east side and one on the west side. We don't have a problem, I don't have a problem with what's on the other side, it's also a Quranic verse. These words specifically are used as a battle cry and the propensity of academics to suggest otherwise uh, tells me just one thing. They're either um, uh, you know, pro-Sharia or pro-Islamist, which doesn't surprise me, because any Muslim would know that one of the prime uses of this verse is a jihadi battle cry, because this isn't the full verse. Mm -hmm. It's an extract from a subsection of the verse with the last line cut off. It's on the Pakistan Army website. I've got photographs of medieval swords with this inscription on uh, the handle, of, on the scabbard of the, uh, as well. It's used as a backdrop by suicide bombers in the tapes they've submitted. Anyone who today says that this intent is not to offend a large uh, Hindu and Sikh community that lives in little India and to show your triumphalism because they, uh, uh, there's a certain amount of uh, uh, deception in how it's been communicated uh, to the city councillors. Uh, for Paula Fletcher to say that acad she'll go by what the academics say, well, most of the uh, academics in the Islamic departments are supporters of, of jihad. I would like one 
UFT Islamic professor to say that he or she renounces the doctrine of jihad, then I will be able to sit down with that person. I was reading your article and what I found most interesting, because when I look at that graffiti art, to me, I have no idea what it says. I, I could walk by it and not think twice because I obviously can't read the language. You're saying that there's this larger movement among Islamists in the West to vigorously assert their presence, presence as, re as well as their separateness from non-Muslims. So what do you mean by that? Well, there is a movement that suggests that Western society is rotten, mm -hmm. that Western civilization should be destroyed. This is clearly spelled out in an FBI document that uh, in 1991 of the meeting of the Muslim Brotherhood in uh, that suggested that they have to work through different channels, through media, through social service agencies, through NGOs, for one final um, uh, goal which is the Islamization of North America. And this is basically saying that I'm showing you my middle finger, you can't do anything about it. If you do, I'll say you're a racist. And it's sad that left wing, uh, parts of the left wing and the Islamists have joined together. And I, I know of people within uh, the city managers who are Islamists as well as support the left, who would just give a wink and a nod and let this go through. Could this be precedent setting? If something like this is not uh, dealt with in the manner in which some people may see to be fit, have it removed altogether, could this be precedent setting in the, precedent setting in the sense that something like this could be painted elsewhere or other of slogans course. could be painted? That's the okay. whole point. Why did people want to bring Sharia law into Ontario? It was to set a footing over here. And from here then to expand that as a model to every North American urban city or uh, urban area. The objective is to set the standards after which they can't be moved. I'm saying that it is the obligation of Muslim Canadians to think of their country and the civilization first and foremost above their religion. I'm not saying remove this from the Quran or anything. Well, people want to have them in their homes, but how does a non-Muslim taxpayer fund a mural that is basically saying that if God willing, we will win in our conquest over you? And it's a subject that we're uh, debating here quite adamantly here on the Sun News Network. It's something that's, you know, not going to go away. We heard from Marissa SMQ. She was saying that they're looking into it at City Hall. So it'll be very interesting to see how this is Who are is they talking with. at City Hall? They're talking to the same people who put it there. Nobody's talked to the, peop the, the gentleman who started the petition. Mm -hmm. Nobody's picked up the phone and talked to me. Well, we're going to see where this goes because we're talking about it here on the Sunday's Network. So that's definitely a step in the right direction. We'll be sure to put this up on our website. More people will get uh, a better understanding of what's going on. Thank you for joining us today. Tarek. Thanks a lot. That's our Sunday's contributor, Tarek Fatah, joining us here in studio with that report. Now, right now... <laughs>